good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time it is. I am glad you're here and listening as we continue our study through Judges. So as we read, let's keep these thoughts in mind. What's actually going on in the story? Like what is uh, being conveyed? What message is being said? And what is the events that took place? And then two, let's think about like through these events, through these, um, through these actions, what is the story saying about the character of God? Who is God? And then next, let's see, what is it saying about the character of man, humankind, whether it be Christians, non-Christians, or humankind as a whole? And then finally, how can we take these things that we have seen and read uh, and apply them to our lives? Let's dive on into that. We're in Judges chapter 1, verse 8. We just talked about how um, Judah went up with Simon and captured a uh, the Canaanites, and they... Uh, killed uh, Adonai Bezik. And so that was the first kind of conquering that happened after the death of Joshua. So let's see what's, what's going to happen next as we read Judges 1 through 8. And the men of Judah fought against Jerusalem and captured it and struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the men of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who lived in the hill country and in the Gev and in the lowlands. And then Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Hebron now the name of Hebron was formerly Kareth Arba, and they defeated Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai. From there they went against the inhabitants of Debir. The name of Debir was formerly Kirith Sefer, and Caleb said, He who attacks Kirith Sefer and captures it, I will give him Aksha or Ak- Akasa, my daughter, for a wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenez, Caleb's uh, younger brother, captured it. And he gave him Aksa as his wife. When she came in, uh, when she came to him, she urged him to ask her father for a field. And she dismounted from her donkey. And Caleb said to her, "What do you want?" She said to him, "Give me a blessing, since you have get, uh, set me in the land of the Negev. Give me also springs of water." And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. So what's going on? What's happening? What just took place? Well, it looks like it says that Judah captured Jerusalem um, and then they set it on fire. So at this point in time, after they did this thing where I said uh, in the last episode that they actually weren't following what God had called them to do, they're, now they're going to do that. They set the city on fire. They burned it down because they are supposed to offer everything um, and kill everyone uh, for what they call um, harem or uh, that they would put a ban over it or devote it to destruction. And so um, after they did that, they went and chased uh, these other people and they got them folks as well. And then I guess they came up to a place and Caleb, one of the two that were um, part of the original cast of characters before God had uh, uh, killed everybody off for not believing And when he said, you can make it to the promised land, they was like, nah, we can't do it. We can't do it. Let us not go over there. But but Caleb and Joshua were only two that said they could go. And so Caleb and Joshua um, made it to see the promised land. Joshua's passed away, and Caleb, still one of the eldest left, uh, says this. So um, he says, what do you say? He says, whoever can capture this land that we're looking to capture, um, he's like, I'll give my, my daughter for a wife. And then uh, a guy does it, man. He captures um, he captures this area and he, he, he gave him his wife. I think the guy that captured it is Othniel. Othniel, son of Canaz. We're going to see him uh, show back up here in a little bit. He's, he's a good character. And so he captures it. He gets his wife. And then his daughter, Othniel, I guess, uh, talks to uh, his wife and his wife is, is, goes up and talks to her father and asks her, if she could have a blessing from him because the land that he gave her was not the best quality land. It's, it's not the greatest quality. And so, uh, because he recognized that, um, Caleb gives her, uh, some springs, an upper spring and a lower spring to help take care of the family that he has, uh, given to them off nail and then their daughters or sons or whatever they're going to have as they, um, are fruitful and multiply the earth. So what is what is that saying? Well, I have to uh, 
Uh, what does that say about God? We have to talk about it. We haven't talked about it before in the last episode, but we'll talk about it this episode. It is the fact that uh, they're supposed to be dedicated to destruction, fire. That's a question that just just is is one of the main questions that people ask about God. Like, how can God be so loving if He's going to kill everybody on the planet? We can go the um, the hard way. I mean, we can. Uh, talk about the hard way and be like, well, it's because God created everyone so he can do as he wishes to them. Um, but I don't want to, I don't want to step that way. What I want to step away is, is the truth. And we saw this in the episode before first is how Lord basic says these things that I did are wrong. They're evil. And so for him to destroy these people, we see that this destruction is because these people are evil people. Uh, oftentimes you read in, uh, ancient literature, or you understand um, the time of that the king or the Lord over all the people is a picture of how the people live, how they act, what they do. And this is this, this is no different. So basic being an evil king, chopping people's thumbs and, and, and big toes off is torturing people is, is basically what it's kind of saying. And then forcing them to be humiliated by eating scraps up under his table it means the people are, are likewise. They're uh, they seek to humiliate and seek to torture people. And so the people that God is commanding them to destroy utterly by putting them under the ban or devoting them to destruction, it's because they are very bad people. They are evil people. And then uh, further, I think that, that we can see is that this is actually a, 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 a picture. Or I'm sorry, excuse me. First, I want to talk about a little bit about some other scriptures and I'll put those in the descriptions, but they are, um, where, where, where actually Moses talks about how they are to go into the land and destroy them because the people that are there are wicked people, evil people. Um, I think it talks about how they sacrifice their children to, um, Molech, which is like the, a God, um, that desires child sacrifice. And so that's one of the things that that God wants to get rid of is people who want to destroy their children. Uh, and he wants to do so because he doesn't want to pollute the, the minds and the hearts of the people that are going into that land. Uh, and we see that because they don't, they don't do what God has called them to do in destroying everybody, that they fall to the same things where the people of Israel, the people who are supposed to be children of God, sons of God, who follow and honor and represent who God is, his character to the world. Well, they get caught up in the things and the, uh, and the, the actions and the religions of the people that they leave in the land and don't kill them. And because of that, they begin sacrificing their children to uh, Molech. They begin sacrificing their children. Man, that's tough. And that's one of the reasons why. So I think that's an important part to realize when we see some of these things like this, we've got to understand the context of what's happening in that to really understand what's going on. And so that's a characteristic of God is that his holiness. So the first question that we usually ask is, is, is what's to say about God? Well, it says that he's holy. Those things that we just talked about demonstrate his holiness, that it is a sin is a, is a, a horrible thing and that it is worthy of death. God is a righteous and just God. And, uh, and other scripture says that, that he, he doesn't even desire to look upon sin, man. And so this describes his holiness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. And then the next thing I think that we should ask the question is, is what's to say about us? Well, uh, I think it, it says in this relationship, this family environment that we see about Caleb, because you might think that that's an odd thing, that he is giving away his child. But in this time, in this culture, it's like an honorary thing. You know, the wife is like actually super excited because she's going to be able to marry a man who is, is uh, um, I guess you could say, worthy, because he's able to take over and conquer and lead. And, uh, and so she, um, desires this relationship and we see that because, uh, she actually talks to her, her father about the things that she needs for that family that she has been given. And so, um, I think what this says about man is, is, is that, that a family is important. 
Now, family is important because, see, Caleb takes care of his daughter. He didn't just give her away and leave her on his own. It may start off that way, it seems like, by putting her in the Negev. But when she comes back and asks on the on, on her, her, her father about getting a better land, a blessing, then he gives it to her because he loves her. And so what we can see is even in a weary and desperate and difficult land, because uh, uh, the time of the judges gets real bad, gets real bad, that we can see that there are families that still serve the Lord and do what he's called to do. And so that's what I think it is. Family is important. And how can we apply these things to our lives? How, what, what can we learn about God and know about God and apply it to our lives? Is that God sees all things and he's a righteous God. So let's live righteously. First and foremost, let's live righteously. But how does that play out in our lives practically? Well, let's be good to our families. Let us do good to our families, loving our children, uh, loving our fathers, respecting our fathers. Because even though she goes to him, which is a tough thing, she doesn't uh, disrespect him. She goes to him in a, um, a kind way, asking for a blessing. And so I think those things are important for us to live by. Is first understand God is just and he is righteous and he is holy. And so let us act that way to our families. Family is important to God. And then in the midst of a, a turmoil, a crazy and tumultuous world, which we do live in, we do live in a crazy world right now. It's not unlike the world that we're going to see is taking place in judges at this time, but that we can still be a, a wonderful picture of what it is to live for Christ, in Christ, to the world. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.